Many Christians in the world today recognize that immorality is running rampant, and the breakdown of family values as well as ever increasing burdens instigate thoughts of the need of a solution. People of this persuasion think to implement a day of rest, or let me rephrase this statement. The Roman Catholic Church are pushing laymen and politicians alike to promote and legislate Sunday of a day of rest which would shut down commerce including all forms of retail, entertainment and sports. This idea has been packaged and sold to atheists as well which would refresh them from their demanding lifestyles and would set aside time where family and friends could spend quality time together. The problem with this solution to a sometimes seemingly chaotic world is that Roman Catholic Church is pushing her holy day of Sunday, which is the mark of her authority instituted back in 321 AD by Roman Emperor Constantine. There are many other Christian denominations who keep the Sabbath, Saturday, dot for example Seventh-day Baptist, Worldwide Church, Seventh-day Adventist and hundreds of other denominations who keep Saturday. The Jews keep the Sabbath, Saturday as well, and Muslims keep Friday. So what gives preeminence to Sunday you may ask? Well that is a very good question, and we will cover this a little later, along with the history of Sunday keeping. A conference took place in Brussels on the 20th June 2011 orchestrated by the European Sunday Alliance. Here are some excerpts from their website I invite you to check it out for yourself on www.comece.org. The following statements are, COMECE is a supporter of the European Sunday Alliance, a network of national Sunday alliances, trade unions, civil society organizations and religious communities committed to raise awareness of the unique value of synchronized free time for our European societies. In the context of the revision of the Working Time Directive, the European Sunday Alliance intends to highlight the added value of the synchronization of free time, which is traditionally expressed in the Work-Free Sunday and invites to Sunday Protection Experts Conference Monday 20th June 2011, 11 o'clock to 6 o'clock at the European Economic and Social Committee. Sunday and, more general, decent working hours, are the focus of our campaigns. In our founding statement, we draw attention to aspects of life-work balance and social cohesion that depend on a vast majority of people to have their lawful free time at the same time. The conference will address health and safety of workers. Life and work balance reconciliation of professional and family life. The importance of the weekend for communal life, respect for non-commercial work, volunteering in Europe, time to recover responsible use of working power by enterprises. The conference brings together experts from different academic and professional backgrounds. It aims to inform the discourse of European policymakers on the importance of synchronized quality time not only as a cultural aspect of the European heritage, but as an important factor in shaping social Europe and EU aware of the needs of its citizens. Prophetically this is a very sobering event. The biblical view of Sunday keeping legislated by government represents the mark of the beast found in Revelation chapter 6 verse 10. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, Revelation chapter 14 verse 9. The history of Sunday keeping dates back to 321 AD with Emperor Constantine's nominal acceptance of Christianity, merging Christianity with paganism, moving God's holy day, the Sabbath, Saturday, to pagan sun worship day Sunday. There is not one single verse in the Bible that authorizes this change. Sunday keeping originates in Babylon and so Christians must question if they want to keep the commandments of God or the commandments of men. Revelation Chapter 14, verse 8. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The great city is Rome, the wine is doctrine, and fornication is unfaithfulness to God. Apostate Protestantism has also accepted this illegitimate holy day. The Roman Catholic Church has changed the first commandment, deleted the second, tampered with the fourth, and split the tenth commandment in two, to make up the four second commandment that was deleted. Apostle Paul inspired by God stated, 
Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 to 4. Another point that is well worth mentioning is that on the newsletter subscription form you can see the word Jesuit European office. The Jesuits have history soaked in blood and their actions that contradict Jesus at every turn are an abomination to God and the religion of Christianity. The Jesuit order is called the Society of Jesus, but the name Society of Judas better reflects their maxims. So hopefully with heavenly eye salve you can see that the European Sunday Alliance is one step forward to the fulfilling of prophecy and that this represents the most solemn warning ever put forth in the Holy Bible. I urge you not to accept this abomination that will seal the fate of many.